Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you guys. This bright and cheery sunny day. <laughs> right? All this liquid sunshine coming out. You're still be grateful for it, right? I grew up in Oklahoma, they always said, um, never turn down rain or a newborn baby cat. <laughs> but here, I'll turn down both. So, so anyway, actually the cap I won't bring enough steak, you know. <laughs> but I guess you wouldn't have steak without rain, too, yeah. right? So, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being with us. We just give you the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love to make a side note. A great job with the music. And then also, I love how they're highlighting Nam. And um, there's actually, the church has two Nam missionaries, but the Nam missionary they just highlighted, his name is Virgil. He is a wonderful man. So, actually, with their assessment with him, and, and he's phenomenal guy he left driving church to go plant a church wow. and just a phenomenal man I, I really like him so it's it's awesome to see what God's doing in the northwest through NAM and through the um, Seattle church planting and all that stuff so um, they're worth supporting and we're um, we're just loving on it am I not on there I am there we go. good now I'm on so you don't need that anyway also thank you guys um for allowing me to um, sneak off down to Albany, Oregon last week for the Northwest Horse Expo. So it was phenomenal. I got a chance to um, get back. Those horse expos are kind of my element. And so I, lo I just love being there. So it was fun to do cowboy church for them because that's my language, you know. And so, um, but I couldn't have done that without you guys. And thank you, Pastor George, for, for preaching for me and, and taking care of that. Um, I heard a rumor that this is Easter, uh, Palm, Palm Sunday. Is that right? It's like, did Easter like sneak up on us? Um, we're reading in, in um, Romans, and so it took me forever to get to Romans chapter 4, so I'm going to hit just a hair bit in Romans chapter 4, and then we might slide over there and talk about Palm Sunday, because you know what's really funny is this Bible? It almost goes together. It almost like ties in. It's almost like the dude who thought this up knew what he was doing. Isn't that crazy? And so it says, Romans chapter 4, What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered in this manner? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, if he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So now we're in Romans 4, Romans 1. Does anybody know what Romans 1 is about? It's about indulgence of indulging, trying to fill a hole in our heart. Romans 2 is about comparison. It's about judging. Our, our not just judging others, but we judge ourselves too. And that can be just as bad. Romans 3 is about what? Saving ourselves. Right. And so yeah, all those things are things we try to do to save ourselves, to make ourselves good enough for God. And God's already made us good enough for him because of what he done on the cross. But also think about this. He said, said we're made in in his image. Right. So his image is pretty good, I think. Right. So now we think about that. And so so we go down to Romans three. I'm going to I'm going to recap and then hit get into Romans 4 because it's really really good and then it'll tie into Palm Sunday believe it or not somehow I hope at least <laughs> but now righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify the righteousness come from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to some who believe the what to all who believe, there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all know that one. But it says, and are justified. So if all have sinned, all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him 
as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. It's called the principle of faith. And so where then is boasting? It is excluded on what principle? Well, the principle of faith, right? On that uh, of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles too? Yes, the Gentiles too. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith, do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold it. So what's he, what's he saying? He's saying all sin, right? We all mess up. And if we're trying to do it on our own, we're going to mess up, right? You know what? Like, I can't even get out of bed without messing up. Right. When you get to the standard, because Jesus brought it to standard, if you think this way or you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Think about that. Right. So you're like, well, I don't have any thoughts about him. Anybody ever have someone pull out in front of him in a Prius? <laughs> right. What's the first thing your, your mind goes around? And if you're driving a Prius, I'm sorry. Right. But, but your, your mind goes rushing with all these thoughts of it was like how you gonna squish you like a bug i got a big truck or whatever right guess what you missed it right and so there's a standard and that standard's jesus right uh, that standard is a person we talk about the standard being the word but the word is not just a book but it's a person and his name is jesus and so jesus coming was a perfect sacrifice a perfect person that he's like look I did that so you don't have to do that. I'm trying to tell you that you cannot do that in your own flesh, right? Because you're going to try to fill it with, with a fill of holes and indulge in things, or you're going to start judging other people so you can make yourself look good enough, or, or you're going to try to save yourself and make rules and loopholes. And that's what, the, that's what they were doing here. They were making rules and loopholes and trying to justify themselves to be good enough. And then People are finding Jesus, and now they're coming along and they're saying, guess what? It's not good enough that you just perceive Jesus. Now you got to do this, and now you got to do that, and now you got to do that, right? A, I was just talking last week, in the, in the horse world, we have round pins. And so you'll see these guys would get in a round pin, and these horses will go around and around and around and around. This is a, like my grandpa, he always told me, he's like, there's two things with horses that you need to know. Number one, never let go of a rope, right? I'll be out, I don't even let go of feet. I'll be out shoeing a horse and the horse will be kicking and my wife's like, why didn't you just let go? I was like, cause I'll have to pick it up again anyway. I might as well hang on, right? Right? And so my grandpa said, don't let go of the rope. So like, I, I got drugs some, you know, it didn't matter if you had a horse or a cow or a truck on the other end, you, you, we are gonna stop that sucker, right? And so, so that's what we did, right? So when I got married, we come up here to Washington and we're out on Lake Washington and um, we're in a boat with Linda's friends and, and they're like on this tube and they're skiing. They're not skiing, but they're like, I don't know what you call it, you get on the tube and then they drag you around and there's a rope, right? <laughs> and so I'm watching them go and they're doing really good. I was like, I can do that. So I hop on here and they take off like 90 to nothing and here i'm hanging on i'm doing pretty good and then they turn that sucker bucked me off man and so i remember i was just like rolling like this but i didn't let go of the road but they didn't stop either like they're yelling at me james and i'm like what let go of the rope i'm like no, I'm a cowboy. I can't let go of the rope. And I'm just thinking, my grandpa will kill me if I let go of this rope. I am a cowboy. I will drown before I let go of this rope. You know what I did? I didn't let go of the rope. They had to pump a gallon of water out of me. 
I made them stop that thing. Right? They ain't circling back around and getting me. Because I'm not letting go of that rope. See, that rope's like a cord. There's a hope that we have. In, in Hebrew, there's a word called tikva. Anybody ever hear the word tikva? It means hope. But when you look it up, it's more like it's like a cord that's tied together. It's like a rope. It's like something that you 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 hang on to, right? And so so um, so you got this cord that 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 you can hang on to, but or it's like an umbilical cord. It's like something that goes from you and God. It's what connects you. And I knew as long as I can hold on to that rope, I had hope. And I was going to get back to the boat. And that's what Jesus gave us right here. He's like, you may feel like you're out in the middle of, uh, of Lake Washington, and you might feel like there's, there's, you let go of that, you're going to drown. I can swim. I wasn't going to drown, but I sure wasn't going to let go of that road. That's where we go through in times, in our hard times in life, is we get to learn. Am I going to hang on? Am I going to trust God? Am I going to trust that he's good? Am I going to hang on to hope? In hope, it says, against all hope, Abraham believed. Now, we're reading here about Abraham now, and it says, what then will we, will we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered in this manner? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does scripture say? Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. That's our hope. Our hope is in Jesus. Our hope is in him. Our hope is in the finished work. Our hope is that we aren't trying to be righteous. We're as righteous as we're ever going to be. I got a guy come up to Darrington, and, and um, he's actually studying to be a pastor. But um, he come up to me, and go, the pastor. He's like, like I'm really wanting to dig into the Bible, and he, he's like, like we just got to find purity. We got to get pure. I just need to be pure and pure and pure. And I, I looked at him. I said, Well, how much pure can you get? He just stopped, and he looked back, and he's like. What, what do you mean? I was like, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. Did you accept Jesus as your Savior? Yeah. Do you believe that he finished the work? Yeah. It's like, what more can you add to that? It's like, oh, I don't know. It's like, now I feel dumb. <laughs> this is the best man ever. I just love him, right? And so... But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to add on to something that's already finished. And it just doesn't work out for us. Because it's like, like, like um, me saying, I wish I had a white truck. I'm going to give me a white truck. And you guys are looking at me like, that's your name. You got a white truck. What's the matter with you? That truck's as white as it's going to get. Although it could be, actually, that's not true because it needs to wash. <laughs> Okay, but I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, we're not trucks, right? The blood of Jesus did a great work and it finished. Abraham believed God. Now, before when Abraham was like, you know, they didn't have a Bible, they didn't have a church, they didn't have Sunday school, they didn't have any of that stuff. Abraham believed God and took God only at his word, he didn't ha have. TV preachers on the TV telling him he didn't have Bible studies. He didn't have book clubs. He didn't have any of those. Other. God says, Abraham, I want you to get up and go to the land that I'm going to show you. And do you know what he did? He did it. Did he do it perfect? No, he messed up because he said, don't just you go and your family. Do you know what he ended up taking? Taking more people with him. He messed up, right? Goes and then gets to the promised land. There's a famine. And do you know what he does? He leaves where God told him and goes to Egypt. And then he's like, you know what? I believe God took care of me this way, but I got to save myself. So he's like, I'm going to judge this situation. 
and indulge in fear. And I'm going to say, do you know what, honey? If I, if they know I'm your husband, you're so hot, baby. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen? He's going to kill me and, and take you as his wife. So why don't I just pretend to be your brother and you can go be his wife? How dumb is that? <laughs> this is the dude we're, we're reading about in the Bible. And do you know what God did? He, 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 he told the, the king, don't touch her. That, I will kill you. God told him, I will kill you. I'll take care of it. Isn't Abraham the one who should have got killed? When the, his plan wasn't what he did? If God didn't kill him, I'm sure his wife should have. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. But you know what? He ended up going away. He got Sarah back. It's like a country song. Got Sarah back. But on top of that, he got gold and all this good. And God blessed him in the midst of it. And you think he'd learn, right? No. You know what he did? He did it again. Twice. Not once. You'd think by this time, Sarah would have said, I'm done with you, buddy. And you know what God did again? Bless him again. Maybe he thought it worked once. Might as well do it again. I don't know. This is who we're talking about. Abraham. Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him as right. He didn't always believe God. He believed God, but he didn't believe God. Remember the dude in the Bible says, I believe, but help my unbelief. Am I the only one who's ever like that? God, I believe you, but I really don't. I know your word says it, but right now I have no, I'm not sure about that, but I have this hope. What if it's right? What if that word is true? What if that promise is true? And that's our hope. That's our hope. That's what we hang on to. So against all hope, Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness, right? So here, here, here's Abraham, and it says he didn't he didn't earn it. There's no law for Abraham to keep. There's no sacrifices for Abraham to make. It was just a relationship. It was just him and God, knowing him and God. Me and God, we're one, man. We're talking. I'm. He wasn't even worried about doing things right. God didn't come and slap him and say, you sorry, sucker. It wasn't that kind of relationship. And this is the relationship that Jesus brought back to us because the Bible talks about us not just being like, like just Jewish people being Abraham's seed, but all who believe are the seeds of Abraham and heirs according to the promise that he gave. So he says, now when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but an obligation. Let me tell you, when I go shoe a horse, like I don't go do it for the fun of it. It's a lot of work, and it's not always easy, right? The horses are usually easy. It's the people that are the problem, right? It just, just cracks me up. I, I come home the other day, and I told Linda, I was like, some people need a license to have a horse. Like, I'm, I'm not kidding. I went, went to catch a horse, and it's an older horse. And the lady's sister had gotten hurt and uh, ran over by a bull. So she come out to catch the horse. And she's got this lead rope and halter, and she's walking up to the horse like this. <laughs> and that horse is snorting. I'm out of here. What am I doing here? Why, why would I even be here? And I was like, stop. Just stay there. And so I started walking towards horse. He starts following me. Like, stay there. Stay out of my way. I locked up and just let the horse see me and smell me. Started patting him. I was like, okay, now bring me the lead rope. And she started going oh, like this. And the horse sees her and starts snorting. I was like, what's the matter with you? I was like, take that from behind your back. Can you imagine walking up to someone to say hi? <laughs> you know, you'd freak me out. What's behind your back, right? What, what are you withholding from me? You know what? We do that to God. We have that opinion about God with other people too. I'm going to pretend like I love these people, but I got this halter called God. 
and I'm going to slap it on them when I get a chance. And they feel you coming, man. They feel your intention. A horse can feel your heartbeat from four feet away. We can read. We have discernment and stuff. And so you're walking up to like, I love you. Jesus loves you. But I'm going to slap this on you. And now you're going to have to come to church. And you're going to have to come to Sunday school. And you're going to have to do this. And you're going to have to do that. And then you'll be free. They're like, I am free. I don't need to put in that kind of bondage. But when you go up and say, hey, there's nothing here. It's just me. But Jesus does. And he loved you just like he is. It's for freedom that he sent us free. You know what you find? Find peace. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So I got the, got the lead. The, she had a lunge line, which is really long. She hands me that, and I put it around the horse's neck. And then she starts walking up, and the horse is like, I don't even like her. <laughs> save me. So the horse is coming to me to save me. I was like, give me the halter, and you stand over there. I don't need your help, not that kind of help. And that's what we need to do with religion and with legalism. I don't need that halter. And I don't need that lead rope. And I don't need that intention. What I need is Jesus. What I need is peace. What I need is love. What I need is you. Remember, Jesus just hit the Pharisees, man. And we're giving up to Palm Sunday. The reason we're having a Palm Sunday is because Jesus was meant to die. But also, he made a lot of people mad. A lot of them was religious people, the Pharisees. And the reason... Those were the ones he was hitting the hardest. Why? Because he says, you'll scour the entire planet to find someone and they'll make him a devil seven times or 10 times worse than you are. Because what you're doing is you're going back and you're trying to save yourself. And in trying to save yourself, you're indulging and you're comparing and you're judging and you're thinking, look at me when... Really, it should be, I have nothing to boast about. It's all about Jesus and what he did for me. And there's nothing to boast about in that absolutely not one thing. The news is I got that horse and trimmed it. We were buds, man. That's what Jesus will do. We'll give him the opportunity. Let's take my yoke upon you. My yoke is gentle. And easy, right? Why? Because when you yoke two animals together, do you know what happens? You get one that can really pull and one that can't pull as much. You know what? If that one can pull it, uh, uh, a mountain and you're just pulling a travel trailer, that travel trailer you can't pull by yourself, you know what? You're going to pull anything. You'll pull the mountain too. And you won't even feel it. Why? Because of the strength of the other and that's what he's like like rest in me let me do the work rest in my work and then out of my work you will do good works does that make sense head heart hands it's always inside out upside down not the other way around not an outside god trying to dictate to us but an inside god living out of us that's the good news of the gospel. Christ in us, the hope of glory. It says it's an obligation. So when I go to go to do a horse, like they're gonna pay me. Right? And if if they're if they're giving me a hard time, I'm gonna charge them more. Not because the horse was hard, but because they irritated me. And I don't have to do it no more. I'm old and cranky. Well, I'm not old, but I'm cranky. <laughs> right? So, but I don't do it for the fun of it. I do it. It's an obligation. But if I say, you know what, I want to help you with that horse and I come and do it, that's no longer an obligation, but that's a gift, right? It says this, however, to the man who does not work, how many goes to work and don't expect a paycheck? <laughs> right? That's an obligation, right? You work for that. You expect that. But what if someone comes up and says, I want to give you a billion dollars? You don't say no. Well, what do I have to do for it? Nothing. You just have to receive it. Thank you. And then someone says, well, how'd you get the billion dollar? Well, 
I don't know. Did you, did, what'd you do? What are they saying? What did you do? What work did you do to get that gift? I didn't do any gift, anything. I have nothing, like I can't brag about it in any way, shape or form. It just, this man just said, hey, I like you and I want to give you this gift. And I said, thank you. Why, if anybody, anytime you offer free, honest money, your response should always be, thank you, right? And so that was his response. It said, says it's an obligation. How you work as an obligation, however, to a man who does not work, but trust God who justifies the wicked. His faith is credited as righteousness. Whoa, wait a second. He's saying, all I got to do is trust God. Like my part is believing what God already did is a finished work and it was good enough for me. That's my work. He says we labor to what? Enter his rest. You know what? I find when I'm rested, I can do a lot more than when I'm worn out. So that takes me over here to Luke. So here Jesus, he's coming. He's he's done healing a blind man. He done met Zacchaeus, and and um, now it's time for the triumphal entry, is what we call it. I thought that was me whenever I entered a contest because I'd already won, like my Oklahoma Sooners. Never mind. It says after Jesus had said this, I'm in Luke, and then I'm going to go to Matthew. I'm just going to start in in Luke. After Jesus had said this, and I'm in Luke 19, verse 28. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany, in it, at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you. As you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden, and tie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Tell them the Lord needs it. So now I'm going to go over to Matthew. Now, Matthew 21, verse 1 says this. I'm just showing you, it says that more than one person. It says, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you tell him that the lord needs them and he will send them and right away so here they are it's lamb selection day on the 10th of nisan not nisan like the car but nisan it's the month of nisan where we have passover so so here's lamb selection day where they would bring all the lambs and they would bring them down the street. As they were bringing down the street, they would have these palms, and they would be singing, um, Hosanna, 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 Baruch HaVashim at Adonai. Hosanna, 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 Baruch HaVashim at Adonai. They were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they, this wasn't something that they just decided, hey, let's have a parade and Jesus might show up. They did this. They would take the lambs and they would run them down. And these were the lambs that were they would use for Passover. And so that they were expecting the lamb. They were waiting on the lamb. But what they didn't expect was that that lamb wasn't a lamb that they brought that was getting paraded down to the priest. But there was a lamb the perfect lamb that was getting ready to ride down that street that said, you know what? I'm going to take your sin and I'm going to take your sin and your sin and your sin and everybody's sin and I'm going to die on the cross. So that you don't ever, like you don't ever have to do this again. This is enough. This is plenty. Once and for all. Jesus takes this colt, unbroke colt, tie it up, hops on it, goes down the right now. For me, I'm a 
course trainer, and that's what I do. I compete in cold starting challenges. Used to anyway. I go, I'm used to going to town and they're saying there's a cold. Never been ridden, get on it and ride it. Like I had some time though. <laughs> Not a lot of time. Give me 30 minutes or an hour at least. He's like, okay, here, thank you. Rides an unbroke cold down a street where they're waving palm trees. He's a lot of cowboy. Do we get it? You know what? That animal trusted him with his life. I always tell people a horse is just a mirror. It mirrors back. I can look at a horse and watch him with their person, and I can tell all I need to know about that person is when they're with the horse. Only all I needed about to know about Jesus. He's trustworthy. We're celebrating Passover coming up here in a couple of days. And we're celebrating Easter. And, and of course, we got Palm Sunday. And all these holidays that we celebrate. But what I don't want to lose in the sight of celebrating all the, all this stuff is a person. I don't just want to celebrate a, uh, a day. I don't just want to celebrate an Easter or a Good Friday. I want to celebrate Jesus and what he did. More than that, I don't just want to celebrate. I want to know him like he's with me. He's in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I don't want to wait until he comes back or wait until I go to heaven to know him and talk to him and have a relationship with him. He's in me. So now I can trust him right now. I can talk to him right now. I was wondering, why do you close your eyes when you pray? I thought it was just so I could scare my passenger when I was driving. <laughs> That's not, apparently. Why, when you close your eyes, you just, oh, wow, there you are, Jesus. You're with me. Now I can pray. Now I can talk. And he's not far off. But he's right here and he loves you so much. And all I need, throw you some hope. You can hang on to this. When he completed his work, it was more than enough. And it is finished. Amen. Amen. So, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for loving us. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.